uh, as you know, uh, Sharon G. She is a performing artist, teacher, choreographer, scholar, and trained in Odissi, Mayur Bhanchau, and Manipuri. She has been trained in Odissi by the legendary Guru Heru Chakran Mahapatra. She has presented and promoted uh, all Indian classical dance forms across the country and internationally for 45 years. She is also the founder of Manas uh, Art uh, Without Frontiers. And she has won several awards and honors uh, for her contributions. Namaskar and welcome. Uh, once I have uh, with me Taranya Rath, who is a Spikmeke volunteer and a student of uh, product design from NIFT Bangalore. Over to Taranya. Namaskar, ma'am. Uh, good morning and welcome to today's interaction with Sharon Lawrence. Sharon G was born in Detroit and had a 17-year training in classical ballet. She came to India in 1973 after earning degrees in humanities, fine arts, Asian studies, and dance from the University of Michigan. She came to India with a Fulbright scholarship to study Manipuri and later Chao in Odissi. She has trained in Odissi under Guru Kelu Chena Mahapatra from 1975. She is the first woman soloist of a previously all-male form responsible for introducing Mayuban Chao to the United States at the 1978 Asian Dance Festival in Hawaii and later at the Olympics Art Festival of Mars in Los Angeles. She is singularly responsible for getting Chao presented on Doodarshan's national broadcast. Ma'am, now I welcome you and please take us to your journey. <laughs> Thank you. And it's really a pleasure to be with you. And I'm so grateful that Spick McKay is organizing their conference online and doing all of the wonderful work. And I'm especially pleased uh, to be speaking with the attendees of this convention because you are exactly what I was when I was a youngster. Uh, always curious, always wanting to explore, to absorb, to try things out. Whenever there was an opportunity, uh, taking a, a five days of Bhartanatyam during a ballet conference, uh, doing a, uh, master classes in some folk dance, arts, crafts, literature, whatever it was. And these are the things that all be part of you. Even if it's just taste. Ma'am, um, so first of all, I'd just like you to briefly like speak about how your journey is from uh, coming from doing ballet to getting introduced to uh, I saw things from Africa, Asia, Europe. And so, um, you know, whether it was, uh, you know, Gopi Krishnan or Uday Shankar, everyone in the world came through Michigan to perform. Okay. So, um, I, and also, I understood when I was in school that you are always going to get more busy, so you can better pack in as much as you can now. And the other thing was that when I grew up uh, in America in the 50s, that was a time, 50s, 60s, when um, people were able to travel to Europe post-retirement. Oh. And I said, everything in the world is so interesting. What if I wanted to be somewhere else? So I started traveling early. Uh, I managed to get to California when I was 10 with someone to visit relatives. I went to Mexico. I taught Head Start a puppetry in Mississippi. And then I spent, uh, during college, I spent two summers in Europe, three months each. So next on my list, my young bucket list, was India. Um, so as you're, uh, you were an ODC teacher, you're a guru, uh, I just wanted you to... Uh, uh, share your views on the Guru Shishya Parampara and which is unique to our Indian uh, culture and how have uh, you adopted that and how have uh, you, you know, uh, celebrated that over the years and what do you do? So, I mean, I was very blessed that 
um, my gurus were all very generous. And in fact, the reason that I am an Odissi dancer today is is obviously because Burkina Charan Mahapatra was a great artist, a generous teacher, um, and was wonderful, but also because he actually forced me. Um, when I started Odissi, he was coming to Trivini Kalasangam in New Delhi and giving workshops for two or three months. And the first year, I looked at it, and it was beautiful to see so many students able to learn from one guru. He had an ability uh, in his pedagogy to train more than one or two at a time. But I was not a dance collector. When I was completing the second year of my Fulbright scholarship, uh, I thought that I would take his workshop with permission from my monthly guru, only academically, only to understand what um, Odissi was. Anyway, when I took the workshop, Guruji um, felt that because of my background, I could learn very quickly. And he taught me Mangala Charan Bhattu Savri Pallavi within just two months. And he forced me to get a costume made. He forced with Kavita Shridrani to get the right star. He forced me to make a music recording and he insisted that I had to continue. And then over the years, um, he was the one who would always say, uh, when I came to Orissa, he said, I want you also to present Manipuri here. I need to see it. Now, the relation to the guru, you see, the word guru is used very loosely these days. A guru is not simply a teacher. A guru is a master teacher. And not only a master teacher, but a mentor, someone who cares everything about you. Kilu Babu, Guruji, was like that. I have seen him literally do the makeup from uh, powdered, powdered pigments and paint with Alta on the feet of an entire troop of dancers. He treated us all with love and affection as though we were his daughters. In America, when we toured, if I took off my boots because we were placed and it was cold and I left the boots and went into the dressing room, Guruji would bring them in because to him, you know, I'm like his baby. So he, he gave so much guidance in so many ways because to be an artist, you're not only learning uh, the skill and the craft, but you have to absorb from the life that you live with your guru whenever you have the opportunity to be with him or her. All of the things, um, how you do arity, because uh, what is your attitude, even toward, uh, toward others. One time, Guruji took me with him from Orissa to Allahabad on route back to Delhi because he was going to be accompanying Sanjuk to Panagrahi. That was a great learning experience because Sanju Nani, she shared with me the details of how she would put pins, keep the fly away. I saw how an artist behaves with the sponsors, with the musicians. What are the little, you know, niceties? And in every way, Guruji was supportive. Let me give you one example of a great thing that a guru does. In 1978, when I had, um, I had only learned five items complete. And I was returning to the U.S. for a while. We made a recording in Orissa. And after those five items were recorded, Guruji had the musicians record five more that I hadn't learned. He said, this will save you money. Next time you'll learn them. And he totally had trust that I would never misuse this music. And he wanted to help me. Um, and, you know, this is a guru. Um, so, talk about gurus, what is your first memory of uh, Guru Purnima um, that we celebrate and uh, how do you celebrate? Say again, oh, Guru Purnima. Yeah, right. Um, that's an interesting question. One time there was a student coming to Guruji and doing the whole ritual 
to become a shishya. And I said, Guruji, I've been your shishya and I've never done this. He said, oh, forget it, not necessary. The relationship, you see, every ritual is something that has meaning because you put meaning into it. When you do your Bhumi Pranam, if you think with gratitude and respect about the earth, it has a meaning. If it's just a physical exercise, it means nothing. Now, it's very interesting. On Guru Purnima, my students that are international are the ones who call me from all over the world. And yet my Indian students prefer to remember me on Teacher's Day. Oh. <laughs> That, that, that's what um, I was going to ask you that, you know, what's the difference between the traditions from the 80s that you have uh, seen and you have, uh, you know, uh, grown up with versus today's generation when you are teaching students and disciples? Well, the difference, that's a good question. I mean, what is the difference? The difference in the teaching, of course, obviously, there's more teachers. Um and um, we all know that uh, dance is, is popular. Uh, dance is getting faster. I think, I think one difference is that because of the popularity of dance, that you have large classes, which means that teachers are doing group compositions. And in a group composition, everyone gets an opportunity to participate. And so sometimes people say, well, now there's no point in having so much. Um, uh, I, I saw a few of your previous interviews where you had mentioned uh, about a language barrier, uh, like uh, how you didn't understand uh, what was in, like in ODC, the written of the uh, wordings that you say, you know. Can you, uh, like, emphasize a little more how, how it was different for you versus the other students who were learning? Yes, it's interesting. That it's kind of a situation where uh, if you get lemons, make lemons. So because of not having the uh, language facility to peg movements onto, this had a cup. Obviously, it's a disadvantage because I had to take time to like get the text, get the connotation, get the denotation. What is all of the meaning of everything? What is the backstory? But I feel this has turned out to be a major advantage. For one thing, I've always gone more deeply into understanding the text, the poetry. What is the context of the poet? What is the difference between the poetry and the choreography, which is interpreting it? Because in Odyssey, unlike Bharatanatyam, Guruji created the Sancharis, and we stick to what he created rather than having the flexibility of creating your own sancharis while you're dancing. Uh, we do that in our own choreography. The other thing, too, is that because I had to understand and internalize the text, I did not assume that my audience is understanding the text and the words. That meant that I must make it absolutely clear through the bob and through the action. And yeah. so... Um, uh, it also made it possible for me to then go into other languages. So if there's, uh, you know, Tiagaraja, then I take Tiagaraja. If I go to Kerala, then I do in Malayalam. Or, or for Dudashan, Dogra, Bengali. So I've done so many different languages. Um, uh, because of developing that ability to... Um, unpeel the onion of like what is that whole context right so um so that another question was uh have you had to change any uh teaching methods over the course of the years you know as the world is rapidly changing and children have more access to uh more exposure um through various platforms like the internet and all have you had to uh, do anything different like uh, for your students when you teach them? Well, one of the things that coming from the West, as well as having training here and seeing things, um, you know, there's no, I mean, my basha is dance, and there's no accent in any dance styles. 
but definitely I am American in my attitudes toward um, wanting everyone to achieve rather than the attitude of fostering competition. So I've always endeavored to make the classroom a place where everyone is comfortable. And one thing that I've done from the beginning with my students uh, is have students see each other, sometimes in pairs, and sometimes like some in front and some watching. This gives them the ability to see things that are working or that need correction that may not be an issue for them or that may give them an idea of what they need. And, um, and then um, uh, it also gives them the training later to become teachers themselves. So for instance, Vishwanath Mangaraj, who I've taught for like 19 years, He's just a wonderful teacher because from the earliest, from, from you know, nine, ten years old, he's learned how to see what it is that someone is doing, what how it needs to be corrected, what needs to be done. It also gives students permission to share and to care about each other rather than it being just hierarchical uh, learning from the teacher. And, um, you know, I don't assume that students should know things. Um, and, um, but the one thing uh, is that I'm unfortunately or fortunately, I'm, I'm, I don't like to use the word strict, but I'm afraid I am. I mean, I'm quite a stickler and I, I find that those students who really just want to have an experience that there are so many teachers they can go to where they don't have to be technically very perfect and they can have a wonderful time and they can be in costume and they can do dances and you stop at 10th or 12th. But for anybody who wants to go on, you have to have a perfect foundation, whether it's in Bob and expression from the beginning and also in your Anga suit. So as you mentioned that you uh, say that you probably strict, I, I want to ask how important do you think it is for today's uh, gurus to be a certain amount of strict inculcate you know a certain amount of discipline because uh, indian art form is not just about the dance it's about so much more it's about the uh, culture it's about you know uh, your riyas that you do or just you know like in kathak you probably do just a um i was very very relieved when to research because it's up to the student and today everything is available right. if you want to see what the technique of odyssey is you can see Guru Kailu Charan on my YouTube channel doing all of the basic stepping that I've got, you know, archival recording that I took in America. If you want to have background in the arts, you go and look at Sahapedia. You go and look at, um, uh, you go and look at, um, you know, everything on Google. So it's the student's responsibility. Agnes DeMille said to a dancer who said, should I dance? She said, if you have to ask, then the question is no. You have to follow and do because you want to. You are not going to get the rewards that you would doing a career in business. And it has to be uh, an inner motivation and an inner drive. And as I've said in other interviews, when I was 13, I reluctantly accepted that I could not be a professional dancer because I felt I couldn't give that many hours a day to Riaz because I really loved so many other things. I kept up with my dancing and other things. And yet all of that came together and, and here I am. I mean, I've been in India 47 years. And when I came, foreigners were considered hippies. It wasn't until the 90s when I made my Videshi Kalaka Utsav Festival and I presented artists like Ileana Chitaristi, uh, Dominique Delorme, Romley Ibrahim, Justin McCarthy, then people started to see that foreigners could be artists as well as students. Um, but I am dancing because, because when I offered the art, people accepted it. That nourished me. And so that nourishment from the audience, from the guru, is what motivates you to keep going. 
But I don't think external discipline is going to make an artist. Um, like you mentioned, when you first came uh, to India, foreigners were considered uh, hippies or something. Right. But like, how difficult was it for you to uh, be a foreigner in India and uh, pursue this? And I'd also heard that there was something between the years in which you came. Like there was a, if you would have come one year earlier or one year later, it would have been uh, something. Oh. Um... Uh, well, you know, that's a wonderful question. Actually, I received my Fulbright to come in 1972. And that, that was just after the Bangladesh War. And at that time, we had a horrible U.S. President Nixon who supported Pakistan. And so uh, India decided to review its policies on giving visas for students and scholars. Because of that, I had a one-year delay. And I only came in 73. The advantage to that was that in that time, I finished my master's degree, taught at university. And so I actually, when I came to India, didn't have to run back. I could extend my grant. But as far as adjusting to India, it was interesting. I arrived in Delhi and I really, there was no issue about it being India. Um, but the issue was the problem of any young woman in a new city where you really don't know the rules. I had decided I wanted to live in a paying guest so that I would have a little guidance. But that paying guest turned out to be um, uh, a kind of created room in Baki Lane in the middle of Delhi in an old, back of an old bungalow. The family was up in Simla and there was like a 12 year old boy who obviously didn't speak English, who was in charge. So I didn't know whether or not it was okay for me to walk around in my bathroom, in my bathrobe with, you know, a, a boy there. I didn't know whether it was okay to go out after dark if I needed bread. I didn't know that you have to turn off the punka because the power might go off. I mean, all the little things about adjusting and, um, you know, and eventually, and he, you know, he'd lock the door, I'd be locked out. So eventually I got my own uh, apartment and I managed. My, my entree into India that helped was that I had four uncles. There were four artists who were like batch mates or professors of very close family friends from the time I was 10. Uh, Narendra Patel had gone to the States. So Shankar Chaudhary, um, Himad Shah, uh, Ashanti Davi and, um, and, and Santosh, Tia Santosh. Because of them, I then became friends with all the modern artists. And it took me a long time to begin to know any of the dancers because in Manipuri, I was the only student. Um, also, just shedding on how uh, the, different, the differences that you had to face when you came to India. How, what about the uh, food and the differences in, somebody has asked this question, online um, is that how did you manage your food at that time and like yeah how did you because it must be a drastic change in terms of uh, what um, you ate there no tea. actually I mean food has never been a problem I've unfortunately never had a problem eating too much and I love the food um, but I've never been addicted to the kitchen and right. so uh, in the west I think I was more familiar with using an oven and yes. here, of course, there's just the burners. So I think I wound up eating out a lot. I accepted a lot of dinner invitations. And um, one thing that's very amusing about that is that my feeling was that by going out with friends in, in the artistic community, that that was much better because, let me put it this way, as a young woman, I understood that my interest in India was my interest. And I understood that if I were to have any relationship or a boyfriend, that if it did not become permanent, that you would lose your friends because they're their friends. I wanted my own identity. So all of the artists, whether it was Guy Tonde, Biran Day, um, Ravi, all, all of these people, they were all friends. And I interacted with everybody in public to make sure that there would not be any issues of anything personal. 
But what I didn't, of course, realize was that in India, the moment you're seen in public with anybody, it's mm -hmm. assumed that something's going on. And that was like quite mortifying. Um, uh, because again, um, an American attitude is that right. you're watching yourself, you know what you're doing. It's not external that people are watching. Whereas in India it tended to be more like, you know, the other way around. Right. So that yeah. So these are the kind of things that I I, I was wanting to know. Okay, you know, especially in the eighties, the must it must have been different. And Delhi in eighties must have been much different than what it is today. Um, is there anything specific, like any story that can that you can recall that you faced during that time in the eighties in Delhi? Was it different uh, for students on their own, especially, you know, a, a girl rather than today? Um. Well, for one thing, of course, Delhi was very safe. Um, you, you know, the worst that would happen is you'd walk by and somebody might whistle a, a film tune. You did not have the issues that you have today. And um, of course, one of the things was that um, this before 91, there were really no consumer goods that you had from the West. Okay. And so... Uh, in those days, I wore contact lenses. Then later I had LASIK, so I don't need glasses anymore. But like, for instance, there was no such thing as contact lens solution in India. I had to bring that with me. Um, I mean, you cannot believe the things that were not available. And um, so I also developed the art over the years of like bringing everything from India to the West and bringing everything from the West here. When I had my daughter, I mean, like diaper pins, nappies, um, um, you know, the plastic pants to go over them, everything you know, had to be brought in. So um, you, there was that. Um, and then there was, you know, there, there, I would, I mean, I would take my daughter with me sometimes to meetings with sponsors uh, so that I wouldn't be alone with them. And um, uh, I, I think that I've been pretty fortunate, partly because I think that many times I never picked up the cues. I didn't know what was going on. And it was a time when people were like so aggressive and I really didn't get it. Um, so I think that I've been spared a, a lot. <laughs> um Someone has asked, uh, can you uh, share your experience about uh, the Odissi culture as your uh, Odissi dancer? How, what was your first interaction with the Odissi culture and how has that helped you uh, in your dance form? Well, <laughs> actually, the first, I'll tell you a story. The first time I went to Orissa uh, was a summer workshop. It was the last year that Guru Keli Charan Mahapatra was teaching at Kalavikash Kendra. So I stayed at Kalavikash Kendra because it was during the summer. I was given one entire room, which was wonderful to have that privacy. The other girls were in another room. I slept on a, on a, uh, a wooden bed, no mattress. Uh, if you didn't take a bath by six in the morning, the water was too hot. Um, I would go in the afternoon by rickshaw to Guruji's house for my own classes. But because Protima Bedi had been there a couple of months before and created a terrible scandal, he did not want anyone to know that someone from outside was there. Forget about foreign, even from outside of the Guruji's. So that was my first intro. Also, Guruji had me perform with the students and he said, don't tell them what a short time you've been learning. They won't understand. And he had me uh, perform, um, you know, Mangala Charan with everyone and then with, uh, with the teacher from KVK and with, um, you know, scholarship holder. But when I, this was in Katak. Now in Katak, oh my goodness. The, first of all, you've got Guruji's daily puja. And so this is wonderful because we all participate in it. It gives you a sense of culture. 
And Guruji always had us observe what was going on around us so that we could imbibe that into our dance. Later, when my daughter was crawling, he would stop the class and say, see, this is stop. This is when you're doing, uh, you know, Hare Krishna, this is what you need to do. Um, there was also the ritual of bathing, which meant that in the morning, you would take your clothes, your toothbrush, your soap, everything. You would go and get a bucket from the well, put it into the bathing room. Then you would go to the pit toilet and avoid the giant cockroaches. <laughs> and then you would come back and, you know, wash your clothes, your hair, and everything. If you forgot something, tough luck. You can't go there till after your bath. And, um, and then, of course, th that was very interesting. And, of course, some girls um, took longer than others. We had to all adjust with that. The thing is that we didn't go out. The big excitement was going for coconut water, Nariel Pani. And, um, but, Greg, but of course, the first time I went to Orissa, I went with my mother uh, when she was visiting to visit all of the temples. Basically, audio culture is very ancient, very deep, and very rich. And it is, it's something like a diamond mine where more needs to be brought out and more value needs to be given for the artists and for all of the arts because so many people are not getting their due and that creates a kind of competition and, and, and not the kind of feeling that would be wonderful to have in a community of artists. Um, but I feel very blessed to be able to have gone deeply into it and to be able to move the tradition forward and also to, to share it everywhere. Um, somebody has also uh, asked, how has uh, Odissi helped you in understanding the spirituality of Jagannath uh, from the culture of which Odissi is inspired? That's a wonderful, wonderful question. You see, as I say, when I came to India, I had a dance background. And I did not come, as some do, on a spiritual quest. Um, and I didn't come to become a professional dancer. Uh, I came um, because I'd always had an empathy for cultural nuance and understanding. Over the years, as I've continued in my Odyssey, it has definitely um, enhanced and brought out um, my own spiritual journey. Because I would say that as a dancer, half your riyaz is your personal development. And so we are blessed to be in, to be every day, you're going to work your whole life. What work do you want to do? When you're a dancer, your work is about love, truth, and beauty, and not selfish, self-centered love, right? But non-dualistic inclusive love, you know, real truth, universal truth, and beauty that's not superficial and saccharine. And so by able to going into the text, and really the reason that I'm doing Odyssey is the technique is beautiful and I love it. But when it turned out that Abhinay was my forte and and the, the ability to like internalize rather than intellectually understand uh, meanings, um, was very enriching for me. Now, in terms of Jagannath culture, my goodness, you see, Jagannath is very personal, and um, and you know, I, I as I under, you understand culture in comparison. You see, whatever you are, when you learn about the other, it gives you the opportunity to understand yourself, all the things that you take for granted. So, if I dance in the south. And I'm doing a choreography um, where uh, V.A.K. Rao says, no, no, that's Sanchari showing um, um, uh, Radha going out of the house and her mother-in-law is sleeping. You shouldn't do like that. Then I ask Guruji. Well, first of all, he understood the Abhinaya because it's a set composition. And Guruji said, you sound like I to think about Parakia. Um and then also for Jagannath, when we, when we, in our compositions, we go like this to Guruji, 
I mean, to Jagannath. We clap our hands and we say, come. In the South, they're like, you can't talk to God. Um, you know, but the thing is, in Orissa, relationship with Jagannath is very personal. You know, it's a very personal thing. And it's loving. And you can you can even scold and you can entreat. And it's part of the culture. It's part of the dance. Um, and then also, you know, Jagannath is so profound because he embodies so many different aspects of the divine. You know, there's the Buddhist, there's the tribal, there's Vishnu. And um, uh, I've been so fortunate, you know, that um, I've had darshan from Jagannath many, many times. Um, because he welcomes me and, um, yeah, it's a blessing. Um, just as we uh, uh, we have a few more minutes left, I, I'd also like to ask you, um, how has your experience been with Speak McKay and how important do you think this is for, uh, the youth generation today? Uh, well, yes, uh, um, Speak McKay has done obviously amazing and incredible work. Um, there's no doubt that when, you know, that when the light bulb went off for Kieran Seth hearing Indian music abroad and then saying, wow, why didn't I get this earlier? And Spick McKay has reached so many people. Um, what I would like to see is, is all over the country, I would like artists, schools, educators, people, to take the Spick McKay model and in your own small way, expand it. Because you see, when a school or a college gets one Spick McKay concert in a year, it's not enough. No. And when there are so many artists, young artists saying, there's no chance to perform what to do. You need to go and offer to schools to old age centers, to hospitals. When I was in America for the longest that I was away, I was away for three years, that's the longest, 78 to 81. During that time, I did 250 school shows for Los Angeles Unified School District. Over the years, I've done 450 um, school, and school shows, aside from many, many hundred college lectems. And they had it set up where every school would get eight performances, one every month. And along with the performance, you get um, materials in advance, you get follow-up, mm -hmm. and it would be organized you know, within the school system. So I think that, that it's just exponentially fabulous what Spick McKay has done. And I would love to see um, everybody make a micro sharing of arts uh, units in every city where you are. I think that young artists should just get together and offer in different places because everything is good and we need more and more and more of it. Um, someone's also uh, asked, what is your advice to young aspiring dancers to persist and not give up? What motivates one to practice day after day over years to achieve excellence and ultimately self-realization uh, through arts? Well, you know, when I first met Hari Prasad Chirasi in Los Angeles at the home I was staying, very close friends of his, and, you know, she said, you must see, and blah, blah, blah. I'm a student of Gela Babu. And he said, Riaz, Riaz, Riaz. Okay. However, always remember, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. If you are doing in a routine way, you will actually be diminishing. You need to uh, find that source. One of the things you can do, um, you don't want to practice just to, uh, you need to have the physical skills. Guruji said, for instance, in choke, step three, one, two, three, one, two, three, where you're sitting. He said, do it for one hour a day. Wonderful advice. Okay. Did I ever do it for an hour a day? Definitely not. Okay. But I did enough other things. Um, you, you, you have to practice because you love to do it. And one thing is that you see um, senior dancers, like in the West, in, with Western dancer ballet, 
you know, when you become a little bit intermediate, you think you're too good to do the basics. But people who are senior, they're more than ready to do the basics with the beginners every day. And this is, uh, Margot Fontaine said that if I don't practice for two days, I know it, four days, the audience knows it. Um, you know, the motivation, um, it, you know, as a musician or a dancer, the motivation has to come from you, but I would say that you get nourished by sharing it. So, um, you know, dance for kindergartners, uh, dance for your neighbors, um, uh, get, offer a performance for your birthday party. Um, go, go to help age, go and dance for old people who are sitting there being bored, right? I mean, share, go to can care. Um, Go, you know, I, I mean, I've done all of these things over the years, Action for Autism, and you will feel nourished, you know, by sharing your art. Just remember that it's not for you. If it's for you, you will not be happy. If it's for others, whether it's your dance or anything else you do, if you're doing it for others, it will nourish you and you'll be happy. Uh, another question uh, someone has asked is that um, our attire is one of our major identifications. Um, but as you see in the present scenario, a lot of uh, dance senior dancers are probably doing modifications to their uh, costumes and ornaments. So the question is, uh, uh, it will create a confusion between the art forms. And uh, what is your thoughts on, on this? Well, it's a very important question. And uh, there's no simple answer because all of the classical dances are basically um, uh, reconstructions based on past, more or less, with exceptions. Um, uh, you know, like Manipuri, Bhagya Chandra's vision. All right. So let's take Odyssey. The costume was evolved out of what is there in the temple sculpture what the Maharis wore, what the Gotipuras wore. Uh, it was not, what we are wearing today is something that was intelligently based on history and created. Therefore, it's not etched in stone. Obviously, if one evolves and makes certain changes, um, that's not a sin. The problem is, whether we are doing new choreography or changing costumes or whatever, um, your aesthetic based on the best of what you know may or may not be good. And also, for instance, um, in the past, someone who would be creating would be somebody who was immersed in their own tradition and had like 50 years experience before they shipped it or made changes. Nowadays, when someone is very young, it's like, okay, here's an idea. Well, maybe it's good and maybe it's not. Um, I, one of the things I would say is that my guru, Keluchan Mapatra, was very generous spirited. He believed that if he taught to so many that would not be responsible to him and they made changes, that the art was strong enough to survive it that those who did things that weren't very good would gradually okay. receive. And so um, I would say that when people do these odd, weird costume things, um, it's, it's really not very aesthetic. And I just hope that people's taste, it won't last. One thing is, the more you stick to tradition, the safer you are. And one should not uh, whether it's fusion in the dance or in costumes, um, it may be a novelty for the moment, uh, but it may not have staying power. As we end this session, I'd like to ask you uh, your message to the young viewers that were, who are watching right now. What would you like to uh, you know, send them a little message? Well, I'd like to say that I hope that you always have a life filled with dance and music. I hope that um, you will always make the effort uh, to explore and to go deeply into the art. I think that if you want to do Abhinaya, you have to start with really understanding 
who is this Nayaka? Where is she? Is she Odia or Tamil or Punjabi or Italian or, or from Peru? So that you get the right uh, Bob. Understand the context, medieval, village, whatever. Then you have to feel it and then you have to share it. And basically, if you're honest to your art, to your guru and to yourself, then whatever you do will be bringing out your own personality and it'll be worth sharing. Thank you, ma'am. And I think this concludes our uh, session today. And it is indeed a privilege talking to you and uh, listening to all your stories. Thank you so yes, much for inviting me. I really enjoyed being with you. And good luck. Thank you. <laughs> all the best for Spick McKay's conference. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Taranya ji. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very much, Sarandi, Meera here, and I like your reply. I just loved your reply. Thank you so much regarding the costume and your sadhana and your you know, long time, like you know, the Guru Sasya Parampara that you uh, respected our Guru like, like God. And I'm so thankful that you are carrying his legacy and we are in a one family. Thank you so very much. Have a wonderful day, Sarandi. Thanks, sweetheart. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, hello. Ha ha ha. Okay, bro. The guy is scared. Uh, just a second. Uh, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. We are. Yes, yeah, I'm ready. Okay. 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 Vidhi, you can just uh, let me know if the video is uh, fine today. Okay, okay, ma'am. If there's some problem, I'll let you know. Yeah, I think this is okay. So, should we start now? Uh, don't from my side, yes. Okay. Namaskar. स्पिकमे के अनुभव सीरीज के पांचवे दिन पे मैं आप सभी का स्वागत करती हूँ ये चार दिन कैसे गुजर गए पता ही नहीं चला और सीखने में इतना मजा आ रहा है कि क्या बताएं सरिता मिश्रा जी तीन दिन से बहुत ही बेहतरीन तरीके से हमें सिखा रही है मैं सरिता मिश्रा जी से निवेदन करना चाहती हूँ कि वे आए और इस वर्कशॉप को आगे बढ़ाए my greeting and my good wishes to one and all i'm sarita mishra disciple of guru sri vichitrananda swami and guru yudhishthir naik and during my childhood i have learned and taken the training from guru nirantan rao and guru padmachalan dehri before i start i bow down to all my gurus for making me efficient in the field of odyssey to share my art with all of you uh, wishing you all a happy learning with me today as you all know we have been taking the station from last four days today is the fifth day and uh, tomorrow we uh, complete the station so those uh, who have joined today uh, i suggest get tuned and uh, today and tomorrow because every day also we are uh, kind of uh, uh, giving you a glimpse of what we did yesterday 
and the previous days. So if you have missed, then you will get a link, if not in detail, but then you will get a link what you others have already learned. Uh, I'm very, very overwhelmed with the response that a lot of students are writing to me that they're following this channel to learn. And uh, some of them have already learned from me, but still they're following. So I'm very happy and thankful to Sikmake and uh, Shriya Shogun sir, uh, Abhishek Agrawal, and uh, all, all the team members uh, of Sikmake. Uh, I extend my gratitude for initiating this beautiful effort uh, to do something and to share the art with all of you being at home during this difficult time of COVID-19. What could be the best way to fight this lockdown and this difficult time of all of our lives, which is so unique and so uh, new and different for all of us? Nobody had the experience of this before and the small kids who are there not able to go out of the house and not going to school. Everything is happening online and happening, everything being home. So I know it is not easy, but we can always be strong enough to fight this beautifully. And art is a beautiful form to engage ourselves and to elevate ourselves. So today, I again introduce my student, uh, Chandana, uh, who is been learning uh, Odissi from me, and uh, she's been a very uh, dedicated practitioner of Odissi. So I welcome Chandana. So she's been assisting me for the last four days uh, so beautifully, and uh, without her, it was a little difficult, maybe. So, so let's start. This Bhumi uh, Pranam, as we have been doing it every day, and as I told you, that if this is a mandatory uh, movement we do, uh, this is the way we extend our gratitude. Every dance form do it, but they do it differently. In Odissi, this is how we do. Kadatak gadi ganadha, kadatak gadi ganadha, kadatak gadi ganatha, ta thi na. Ka thi ni ta ta thi na ka thi na ki ta ta. Once more, I will do this just to ensure that you understand those who have joined today. Just to ensure that how the leg moves. One, two, three, ta. One, two, three. And four, five, six, joining the legs, then seven, eight, and one. Every day we are starting the session with a, a sloka. This is a Guru Shishya ritual we follow in uh, all classical art forms. Though I never consider myself as a guru because, first of all, I'm not of that age. Secondly, we have a long, long way to go to become a guru because those who understand the right meaning of a guru, the right definition of a guru, then it becomes very difficult to consider yourself one because we all know that we are not that. So maybe little more knowledge or little, little more training we have, but still we all are students. So I consider my students as, as my students come friends. But today I will explain to you the sloka that is uh, the, being written by Shankaracharya. The full... Uh, uh, dedicated sloka uh, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Saksha, Para Brahma, Tasmay Shri Namaha. 
I explain first the meaning. Guru is Brahma. Brahma is the creator of this universe. Guru Vishnu. Guru is the Vishnu. Vishnu is the preserver. Guru Devo Maheshwara. Maheshwara is the Lord Shiva, we say. He is considered to be the destroyer of all the evil and negativity. Guru Sakshat Parabrahma. Tasmai Sri Guru Ve Namaha. Guru is Sakshat Parabrahma. That consciousness, that supreme consciousness. I bow down to that Guru. I go by the uh, literal meaning Guru. Gu is, it means darkness. And Ru, it means removal. So Guru is the one who removes the darkness, which is not the darkness of the day and the night. It is not the darkness of the night, but it is the darkness of ignorance. Guru is the person who gives us light and who enlightens us, not giving light of the because we already get the sunlight. Why do we need some more light? So it is not the external light we are talking about here, but it is the light of knowledge. The Guru is the person who shows us, who guides us on that path that leads to wisdom. So if we do it in a dance form, then how will we do it? Guru Brahma Here we all know Brahma is the one who is the creator and who sits on the lotus. Guru Guru Vishnu Vishnu is the one who holds the Shankha who holds the Chakra who holds the Gada and Padma. Guru Devo Mahi Swaraha. Here we show Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva, who holds. The Dambaru, who holds the Danda and the Trishula, Lord Shiva, who is a Don with the snakes around his neck, on his hand and on his waistline. He, who is decorated with the moon on his hair, on his knot, Ganga is there on Shiva's Jata. Ganga flows from there. That Maheshwara, who clears all the evils and the negativity. Guru 
درود بخشت پر برم مها تس می سری گرو وی نما لیٹس دو ونس مور گرو برم Brahma, Guru, Vi, Nu, Guru, ہی 
He's the one who's around his disciples always. So now we begin with the exercise session and we will recap number two, number three, and number nine exercise because we have finished all the 10 exercises and apart from that, we have taught you some more. So we will quickly recap something so that those who have missed can again get it. So we start with number two exercise where we keep the uh, feet to the side and we sit down. It's a warming up uh, exercise for the knee and it builds the stamina as well. So we start.
stretch your body nicely spine nicely ta thi na ka thi ni ta ta thi na kada tak pa ka thi ni double ta ta thi na ka thi ni ta ta thi na ka thi ni ta ta thi na ka thi ni ta ta thi na ka da ta 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 ka thi ni da ba ta a ta thi na ka thi ni 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 i ta i was facing that side just i wanted to show you how the movement of the uh body is happening with closed legs yeah now we go with the hip joint uh, opening that 1 2 1 2 3 ta ta a t na sa ti i ni ta ta ti na ka ti i ni ta absolutely it is uh lifted and this is locked here bend it back the uh, thi without moving the body na ka thi i ni i ta ta thi na ka thi i double ta ta thi na ka thi ni ta thi na ka thi ni ta ta thi na ka thi ni ta ta thi na ka thi ni da ba ta a ta thi na ka thi ni ta a ti na ka ti ni ta a ta ti na ka ti ni ta a ta ti na ka ti ni a ta ti na ka ti ni ta a ta na ka thi ni i ta in almost all the dance forms we have to follow a certain count that if the first beat is happening for two times then the second beat has to be for four times then eight times then 16 times If the first beat is happening four, then it is eighteen thirty-two. So that is the sequence of counts we follow. But here in the station, I am not able to follow the same counting, the repetition of the count, because uh, I have lot of content and lot of information to share with you. So if I go by that, we will consume lot of time. so 
I I thought it was important to mention whenever you are practicing pattern of count or taller remains correct. Now we proceed to the ninth one, the ninth exercise. One, two, one, two, three, step, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ta, 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 ti, ni, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ta, 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 ti, ni, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ta, 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 ti, ni, double, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ta, 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 ti, ni, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ta, 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 ti, ni, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ta, 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 ti, ni, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ta, 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 ti, ni, double, ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, ta, 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 ka, ti, ni, ta. So this is the exercise uh, whenever you are dancing, you are practicing. Please do warm up nicely and then start your practice. These are the exercises. If you uh, follow before dancing, it will be very nice for your body. So now we proceed to uh, Chowka, Chowka number 10. Uh, we yesterday, sorry? Yeah. Yesterday what we did, 7, 8, 9, 10 Chowka. We will just in first speed, we will recap the 7, 8, 9, 10 Chowka. And then we will proceed to the Arasa that we uh, learn after finishing the 10 number Chowka. So we go, number seven, one. As I told you, uh, we, we live in an apartment, so stamping the feet is uh, restricted uh, for me. So that's why I'm trying my best to show you. And uh, But I request whenever you are practicing, please stamp your legs nicely and practice. One, two, one, this is this is how we measure our choker. This is one way of standing like this and opening it and folding. As I told you, choker is a square position, creating four angles with the hands on the legs. So, and the other way of measuring choker is one, two, and three. One. Two, one, two, three, step. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Kada taka. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, one more, one, two. It's a Anga Brahmari, three, four, five, six, seven. Kanda, Taka, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this was this was seven number choker, and we go to number eight. One, two, one, two, three, start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Once more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. So this was number eight. Now we go to number nine. This also we had done yesterday. So we'll quickly recap. One, two, one, two, three, step. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Good. Let's back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this was number nine. And now we proceed to number 10, which is the combination of number one, two, and three. So one, two, one, two, three, that, hey, e, ta, hey, e, ta, e, ta, E ta hei hei ki ta hei ta ki ta ki ta hei once more hei ki ta hei ta ki Ta, ki, ta, dhei. Dhei, ki, ta, dhei, i, ta. Ki, ta, ki, ta, dhei. So this was 10 number choker. Now after this 10 number choker, we will do of Arasa. Arasa is a combination of uh, bowls, we can say, a combination of uh, few steppings or a dance piece, we can say, a small dance piece which follows the same color and it follows the same layer. The speed of the this uh, whole piece will be same speed. There is no low speed, there is no high speed. Same speed is maintained, and uh, Arusas we generally get to see in the one one Pallavis. Uh, sometimes some dance pieces are uh, placed in Abhina as well. So, this 10 number Arasa, which has been uh, traditionally designed for those dances, we proceed with that. So, it is Two, two, three, step. Be, e, ki, ta, de, e, de, e, ki, ta, de, e, de, e, ki, ta, e, ta, kre, de, kre, de, ta, ki, ta, tun, Na, ta, thom, ta, dha, 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 ji, gana, dha. So, we go once more. One, two, one, two, three, sa, dhe, i, one, two, three. This is very similar in 
10 number choka what we learned just before then the e left 2 3 the e 1 2 3 the e 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 in choka the body is moving from one side to the other side tre dhe tre dhe tre dhe tre dhe ta ki ta kham ta udha dha udha di gana dhe so it's a beautiful uh, dance piece in itself uh, which has taken the some of the basics and along with that some of uh, the different movements like kumbhapada to chauka then moving spinning on one leg that we will introduce to, today also that is called ekapada bhramari that we will introduce uh, in some time we'll just quickly have a water break for 15 seconds we will be right back Welcome back. So now, as I told you, so how we go about it, we have Utsluta Brahmari, Chakra Brahmari, Garuda Brahmari, Ekapada Brahmari, Kunchita Brahmari, Akasha Brahmari, and Anga Brahmari. Apart from that, we have two more Brahmaris which are added is Viparita Brahmari and Ardha Brahmari. So today, as we used in the Arasa, the Ekapada Brahmari, so hum aapko wo Ekapada Brahmari, how to do it, that we will teach you. Same standing in Chauka, we stamp one leg, right leg, and push the torso to the left, Bamachara used, move and stand back. So when I spin, my right leg is lifted and and ti ni ta ta ti na ka ti ni come to forward. Huh? Two, three, ta. Ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, da, ta, ka, ta, ka, ti, ni, double, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, 
कटता कठिन ना कड़त कठिन ता भंगी as we introduced tribhangi yesterday and uh, i explained about it that tribhangi is the three bend position which is similar to the english alphabet s which gives me a, a picture of a road which is not straight but which is curved so basically tribhangi is a very curvaceous position which has a lot of archaeological evidences that the statues and the cultures we see on the temples cast already in this position so creating three bends on the body one is on the neck second is on the torso third is on the knee so how to measure your tribhangi and how to create that curvaceous position it is first stand straight in samapada then viparita mukha pada go to uttarasana and Trusty father, come to the bhangi father. Keep your left hand on the waist and right hand on the middle of the thigh, and push the torso and fold the neck to the left side. So when you see like this, now you will relate to it to the bhangi, which gives a picture of a curve culture. So we had done number one and number two. So we go with a recap. One, two, three. We do ta, ta, ti, na, kada, 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 ti, ni, ta, ta, ti, na, kada, 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 ti, ni, ta, ta, ti, na. Now the number two is slightly. Here we use two footwork. One is we bring our leg to the to stand on the toe. That is one, two. Then we bring it to heel. Three, four. One, two. When I stand on Kunchita Pada, my my torso goes to right side. So that is Dakshya Chala. And when I take it to Chi, it goes to Abhanga. So Ta Ta Chi Na Kada Takka Takka Chi Ni Ta Ta Chi Na वी गो टू दन Two, sorry. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. Ta, 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 ti, na, ka, t, 
सी मे again it involves right side and left side so here like we practice in two ways and uh, so one side i will teach you one way and the other side i will teach you with a different hand movement but the body and the leg is same so one first side we will do this okay sorry with the body yes one This hand is in Hamsasya, and this hand is in Dola Hasta. One, and my look is down to the left diagonal. One, two, one, two, three, step. One, two, and three. Curl the back. One, two, three. Curl the back. One, two, three. Ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, double. Ta, a, ta, ti. Na ka ti e ni ta a the tribhangi beauty comes when you sit. Na ka ti e ni one two three push the torso nicely one two three double one two three third step one. Two, three, one, 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 two, three. Double one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One two three, 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 one two three. Ta a ta ti na ka ti, ta a ta ti na ka ti, ta a ta ti na ka ti na ka ti ni ta. The same way also we do on the left side and. Other way, we keep the hands like this, both the hands in hamsatya, and we do both right and left. So as we have less time, that's why I'm giving you the variation, one on the right and one on the right, left, so that when you practice, you can practice both of them, right left and right left. So we sit like this. And my look is again diagonally down. Try to keep your don't allow your body to come forward. Don't push your hip like this. The 
tip is how much it goes when you stand in tribhangi that is enough and fold your torso to create that curve the tribhangi beautiful one two one two three ta 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 ti na ka ti ni one two three kal ta ka one two three my wrist goes out two and come in one two three da bal one two three eat one don't forget to use the torso nicely one two three and sit down one two three 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 double one two three 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 double one two three 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 one so this is two variation we did on right side we did this with the left up and one hand hamsasya where the wrist comes from out hope you are enjoying the session and uh, yes i would like to tell all the people who are watching uh, i don't know you all practice odissi or not but whichever dance form you are learning always remember whenever there is a uh, involvement of number 3 uh, step that is in chauka or in tribhangi does not matter always try to make that one two and three make the footwork clear for a uh, time we are getting to see that in a three number rhythm students are dancing too i know it is uh, it is little tough but who all we do that isn't it tough for us yes it is but if you practice regularly it will happen but don't put down on your practice and don't make people see a two number step when the rhythm is going three it is a disappointment when we get to see that and especially young uh, young dancers those who are just coming up please 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 a sincere request from me that whenever you are doing this always remember that what we are showing to the other world, how we are presenting odissi to the other world to the people who do not know about it those who do not understand nuances about it so when particularly when it comes to rhythm you should be very very particular what the percussion is playing if it is 1 2 3 <laughs> we must do 1 2 3 <laughs> there is no second thought about doing just two number step in a three b so i hope you take my uh, tip in a positive way we proceed to number 4 tribhangi which is a beautiful piece in itself 
I call it a dance. Actually, it's not a basic uh, stepping, but it's a dance in itself. So I would like to show you. Here, it is Tamra Chuda. I keep it as Shukla Chanchu, and this is Suchi Hatta, which touches here the hand. One, two, one, two, three, four. I look down diagonally to the left side before starting. Now, when I start, it is take the body to the other side and one and lowly the other. If you see, my toe is pointed. Then two, placing it on heel. Then three and four. Once more, one, two, one, two, three, start. Ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, i, ni, ta, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, i, ni. Double. Ta, a, ta. T N A K T I N I T A A T A T My leg comes as a wheel, as sound in a circular movement. It goes up and comes down. N A K T I N I T A A Ta, ti, na, ti, ni, double. Ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni. Like to say the nuances little in detail. That one, my bhangi is bama chala, sorry, dakhya chala, and my toe is in a lodi tapada. Then I place it on key, and at the same time, when I drop this leg, I lift this. So three. Four. Then one, two. I details I told you. It will be beautiful, and uh, we still have one more speed to it, and we have to go eight eight times together. There's a space constraint here, so I could not show you that. So I will just show the double speed in. Four four going to four four in uh, both sides. I'll show. I'll show. One, two, one, two, three, four. Pa a pa ti na ka ti ni pa a pa ti na ka ti ni dehe ta ti ni ti na kar pe ta ti ni ti na dehe ta ti ni ti na kar pe ta ti ni ti na da de da ti da de ni da de da ti da de ni da de da ti da de ni ta ka ti ni ta. So now 
that I, uh, okay. I would like to ask you if uh, you want to you know do it right now yeah, yeah. we can be, be, before i proceed to the second session we can take the question okay uh, the question well this is a very tricky question to answer there are uh, several times i would not say it's a uh, uh, one several times it happened that uh, injustice unfairness it's uh, definitely uh, uh, happened and uh, when you work hard uh, and uh, you know what you deserve uh, lot of people you know acknowledge uh, that you deserve then when you don't uh, get that uh, and when you see somebody who who is uh, i would not say undeserving but maybe not as deserving as you uh, here people may question me that how do you know that you deserve yes uh, i know because uh, i believe in the hard work and uh, i do a uh, lot of hard work uh, as far as dance is concerned and uh, i do practice every day and uh, i definitely give my heart my blood and my body to this dance form uh, since the uh, time i uh, you know know uh, about my existence so obviously disappointment happens you feel very harassed you feel very humiliated uh, but then i always uh, when it comes to dance uh, for me dance is like uh, a river and if you say my name is also sarita that means a river that flows without any obstacles uh, so whatever obstacle comes into the life i just take it along and flow so so these uh, this dis disappointment has uh, nothing to you know stop us so rather i would say whenever i uh, had disappointment or whenever i uh, came across injustice uh, uh, situations that happen unfairness that took place it always increased the fire within me to even work hard more it never demotivated me negatively that i will uh, not dance or i leave no no why this happened to me i always say okay if this happened to me i ensure doubly that it doesn't happen to me next time next time also it may happen i'm not saying that it will not happen but at least from my side my effort goes double and uh, dance is something i just do for my own happiness it's it's sheer joy for me so there is nothing to feel uh, low and up whenever i dance i feel low i feel very high and whenever i am low i dance to feel high and uh, whole day my uh, thoughts are about dance as i told you i get up and i go for a walk because the thought behind is i want to dance and i want to build stamina i do yoga to maintain the flexibility that my body looks better when i dance i practice dance to bring perfection to my dance form whoever sees it understands it i eat healthy because i want to dance longer and i want to take care of the body to dance and i teach to become even finer in my understanding and clarity in my uh, movements and uh, teaching also uh, elevates me a lot so so everything uh, you can say everything i do the thought behind is to dance so then how can something uh, just uh, you know irritants and uh, demotivation cannot stop you if you are a true artist then it will never stop you if you are doing uh, these things to get something then yes uh, you may stop but for me it's like if i get something it's okay if i don't get something dance is the happiness i get and uh, that, that is uh, the ultimate objective for me so so i always bounce back because i'm a leo and i i know how to bounce back where 
Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so this was the question for today. So we okay. can continue with the workshop. Okay. Thank you so much, Vidhi. Thank you. So we go to number five, Sribhangi. Here we use Mayura Hasta Mudra, as we had discussed before the Hasta Mudra, day before yesterday and yesterday also. So this same Hasta Mudra continues during the whole uh, dance piece. It is one and two. Three here, my hand changes to hamsas here, and wrist goes out and comes back in, facing towards me, facing towards my face, and I finish it with looking at that palm. One and two. Both the wrists out, three, four, five. Double, one, two, three, four, five. Kada, taska, ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, Ti ni ta a ta ti na ta ti i ni ta a ta ti na ka ti i ni double ta a ta ti na ka ti ni 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 ta a ta ti one two three one and two and one two three one and two and one two three one and two and one two three ta a ta ti na ka ti ni 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 ta So this was Namde Sribhangi, where the body goes like a big wheel, like one, it starts from here, goes down and finishes here. And same this side, it starts from here, goes like a big circle and finishes this side. So, hope you understand the movement. If you have any query about, then if you mention, we can definitely, any step so far we have uh, taught you, shown you, any doubt in any of the movement, you can surely raise a question there so that we can show you again and clarify your doubt. Now we proceed to number six. Sribhangi, which is also a beautiful piece. <clears throat> Here, we keep the hand in Hamsasya Hasta Mudra. Yes. And look will be placed down left side. Two, two, three, start. One, side body. Two, three. There is a brush on the heel. Three, four, five, six. 
circular movement. Three, four, five, six. Curl the back. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, same level, sitting. Three, four. Five, six, double, one, two, brush, and one. How did we number uh, three? We did one, two, three. Second three, two times one, five. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Got it? One, two. Three, ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni, ta, a, ta, ti, na, ka, ti, ni. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Double one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, times one side. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Change. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three. Kathini ta atathi. Kathini ta atathi. Kathini. Tati, tati ni ta a tati, tati ni ta a tati, tati ni, tati, tati, ta a tati na tati ni double ta tati, tati ni 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 ta tati na tati ni ta tati, tati ni. Ta ta ti, ka ti ni 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 ta ta ti, ka ti ta ta ti na ka ti ta. We just take a ten seconds break to have a little water and come. Please be tuned. Come back here. So we proceed to the number seven tribhangi. This needs little more attention from you. So it goes like both the hands in pataka hasta, and one is in chauka square. The other one is close to it. Like this. One, two, one, two, three. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. 
seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So the same way the leg like number four Chibhangi, the leg finishes, comes in a circular movement. So here it is further my uh, leg is on the toe and I bend to that same direction and two and three. It is a brush and my bhangi changes to the other side. Then flat, then again toe at the back, then flat and seven. One again on the toe, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we proceed again. One, two, one, two, three, step. One, two. Three, palm lifted, palm lifted, no, like this, huh? Three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Double one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Use your body with lots of facility. Seven. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, one, two, three, and four, five, six, and seven. Double, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one, two, one, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two. Three, four, one. So here the body goes in a very lyrical way. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. So there it the lot of chances are there that while doing your hip moves with it. But that is where you need to control. And how to control it? That you need to sit down in Tribhangi more. If you allow the body to stand, if you don't take the pressure on the legs, then your, your hip will become loose and it will start going from one side to the other. So moving the hip from one side to the other is not considered to be good at all. Rather, it needs a lot of, as I said, Odyssey needs a lot of uh, uh, precision and a lot of control control over the body. So practice is nothing but to bring that control and the synergy between the whole body, mind and your hand, heart. So with this, we proceed to number eight, Chauka. Sorry, number eight, Tribhangi. One, one hasta is in Mayura and one hasta is in Dola hasta. One, two, one, two, three, step. 
सा आ क Now the leg goes from here to the heel. She places it. Chandana, can you come little ahead? Yes, yes. So do the left side. Do the left side. Huh. So from Tribhangi, it goes to one, lowly the other, two, heel, and the body bends there. Yes. You see the knee is uh, bent to the side. Yes. Then. From there, the wrist bends. Wrist goes in Mari, as we said, a spin. So here, the wrist also goes in a spin. So Brahmi to Mayasya, four, then six, seven, eight. Once more, one. The body goes, ah, uh, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Double one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, double one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. As before, also I told, why we call it one number tribhangi, two number tribhangi, three number tribhangi, ten number tribhangi, or seven number, eight number, ten number shloka, because it involves that many footsteps in that particular basic. So where it is two numbers, two steps are involved, two number shloka, seven steps involved, seven number shloka. Or eight steps involves eight number tribhangi or chauka, whatever. So the count of the footwork determines the number of the chauka or tribhangi you are doing. So if you remember it that way, it will be easy for you to remember the sequence what we have been teaching you. It will be easy for you to remember. So we go with number nine. Uh, Tribhangi today, which is kind of little similar to number eight Tribhangi, what we learned now. One, two, one, two, three. When you are sitting like this, yes, the Tribhangi position, your look is towards this side, and your body is bam, uh, Daksha Chara when you are doing the right Tribhangi. When you are doing Dhamma Chara, the body is to the Uh, left side that is bama chala left leg bama chala right tribhangi dakhya chala so 
सो वन टू थ्री सा वन टू थ्री फोर सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन तो ह्यूर द बॉडी ब्यूटिफुली फ्रॉम वन साइड इट मूव टू द अदर साइड तो वन टू थ्री सेक्स आ थी तो फर्स्ट इट इज रूपा द क्रॉसिंग द अदर फुट देन टू देन इट कम्स टू हील विलग्न पास से निपा दो देन फोर देन फाइव देन सिक्स देन सेवन एट नाइन धनुपद थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन डबल वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स वन टू थ्री वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स वन टू थ्री वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स वन टू थ्री वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स वन टू थ्री वन टू थ्री फोर थ्री ई नी वन टू थ्री ना कथी ई नी डबल वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स वन टू थ्री वन टू थ्री फोर वन वन टू थ्री तारा almost done with the vibhangis and 10 number vibhangis left and today i would like to uh talk about something about uh, abhinaya which is uh, good for uh everyone and uh nice to what is abhinaya if we ask uh somebody the the people people do to do not know this see or any dance form so then how do we express abhinaya so abhinaya is something that feel which is created there is a lyric there is a song there is a lyric to it or there is a music according to the lyric the meaning i understand it creates a bhava in me it creates a feeling in me within my heart and when i use my facial expressions my facial muscles my eyes and my body language my hand movement my uh, hand gestures and i communicate that meaning to the audience who are watching me that is called abhinaya what i feel without saying those words only 
the medium of my expression is my face my hand gestures and my body so how do uh, so suppose i say that uh, if i have to uh, tell you that where is suppose we take krishna where is krishna gone if a sakhi is asking or if radha is asking that where is krishna gone where is krishna how will we show without saying this it is very very easy to say that you know uh hey where are you or hey chandana where are you where is your friend but i have to ask chandana that without saying where where is krishna i look for him everywhere this side of the forest this side of the forest i went and i roamed in the entire forest but i did not see krishna kahi bale se morali phunka so if i take this oriya abhinaya that kahi gale murali phunka jubati rasiya kamini ramka where is krishna krishna is the one who is the player of the flute this vishnu has the flute and this is called murali this is called benu this is called banti different different language people use different uh, words so murali is the phunka is the person who plays it we we do it that's how the flute plays so this is called phunki ba like we when we blow that is phunka so he always blows and plays the murali so that is why it is called murali phunka or murali pani anything that you understand so here this is a small uh, this thing uh, lalita the the sakhi friend of radha she looks for krishna because radha told her to go and search for krishna she went and went and she went everywhere and she looked and then she did not find so she is asking even to herself कहीं गले से मुरली फूका जुबती रसिया कामिनी रंका इट मीन्स कृष्णा इज द वन ऑल दिस यंग गर्ल्स ऑल दिस यंग जुबती ऑल दिस यंग सखी ऑफ गोकुल he takes all their heart so he is the jubati all girls heart is with krishna because they all love krishna so if uh, we uh, tribhanga bhangi re murali bajai it means he plays the benu he plays the murali as the radhike so tribhanga bhangire murali bajai he calls radha and all the sakhis that oh come 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 let's all dance together but where is that krishna gone lalita is perplexed so let's do this uh, little piece you can also learn so from the beginning if we come lalita is looking for krishna dha te te dhi dha tonna 
ता ते ते भी धा तो ना धा ते ते भी धा तो ना ता ते ते भी looking for searching for Krishna धा ते ते भी धा तो ना ता ते ते भी धा तो ना धा ते ते भी धा तो ना ता ते ते भी धा तो ना okay let's do it once more one two three do do one two three ta धा धा ते ते भी धा तो ना ता ते ते भी धा तो ना धा ते ते भी धा तो ना ता ते ते भी she is lifting the creeper that is hiding here but then no she is not here also she is looking for far she is looking far that is he somewhere is he sitting on any tree because krishna has the habit of sitting on the tree and playing the murali is he is he sitting on the tree no then where is krishna gone then she asks kahi gale murali hunka kahi gale kahi gale kahi gale murali hunka hmm? once more we do from kahi gale from here one Two, three, start. Kahi gale? You are asking. Kahi gale? Murali hunka. Then go to the right side. Kahi gale? Kahi gale? Kahi. gale murali phunka se ju bati rasiya kahi niranta kahi gale murali phunka so here we are saying se ju bati rasiya kami niranta but he is where kahi gale murali phunka tribhanga bhir murali bajai tribhang bhangi murali bachai tribhanga bhangi murali bachai da ko thanti aso 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 radhika kahi gale murali phunka शुभती रसिया कामिनी रंगता गले मुरली फूका सो वी डू फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग वन मोर वन ओके वन टू वन टू थ्री सर धा ते ते भी ढूंढो यू आर सर्चिंग फॉर कृष्णा ते ते भी तुम धा ते ते भी धा तुम ते ते भी धा तुम ना धा ते ते भी तुम ना ता ते ते भी धा तुम ना धा ते ते भी धा तुम ना ता ते ते भी धा तुम ना कहीं गले म 
मुराली फूका काही गाले लुकिंग फॉर बोथ द साइड काही गाले काही गाले वन वन टू थ्री से jumping to the side a tribhanga 2 3 4 a tribhanga bhangi ve murali bajai to the front now again two times to the left then two times to the right and again moving to the front 1 2 3 भंग भंगी इवे मुरली बजाई त्रिभंग भंगी रे मुरली बजाई देख समझो आत्रिभंग भंगी रे मुरली बचाई वन टू थ्री फोर आत्रिभंग भंगी रे मुरली बचाई डाकू था वो ताली बजा के इस कॉलिंग आ जाओ इस तरफ भी गोपियों को बोल रहे आ जाओ आ जाओ यार आओ तुम क्या because radha is his most beloved one so with lots of love he is calling asa radhika so we go from tribhanga bhangire once more one two three four a tribhanga bhangire murali bajai tribhanga bhangire murali bajai tribhanga bhangire murali bajai da ko thanti aso 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 radhi ka but i am not finding that krishna only where is he kahi gale murali khunka se jubati prati kamini ra ka kahi gale murali khunka so these are the expressions that you know beginning uh, when we start learning because these are little simple uh, simple uh, expressions so i hope you felt it easy and uh, understood the meaning and understood what we did here so as today time so we will uh, do the bhumi pranam and we will do the stretching quickly and uh, kadatak gadigana kadatak gadigana tha kadatak gadigana ta krita thi na kadatak tak thi ni ta krita thi na kadatak tak thi ni ta as every day we have been teaching you all the cooling down stretches how to do so
So we will have a recap of that so that you can do it with proper count. One. So crossing the legs and keeping the knees in shape and going down. Stretch from your hips nicely and stay there for 15, 20 counts. You feel good about it. If you are enjoying the stretching, be there for 20 counts and uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. Lift and then cross the same on left. Yes. One, two. Remember to keep the hip in the center. It should not move to one side. It has to be in center. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and one. Relax. Now, yesterday's uh, stretching was we started. Yeah. Yes. Keeping the front leg in square. Yes, and spreading the other leg back in flat. The toe is flat and the body is in the center and we go straight to the center, spreading the hand forward like a completely like a crocodile on the floor, flat body, hip in the center. And remain there for 15 to 20 seconds. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 1. Just hit the left and reverse side. Stretch it, keep the leg in the square, and put the other leg back, and the toe is flat, the knee is flat, everything is flat and straight. Now go forward. First put the chest, try to put the chest on the leg, and bring your hands forward, and go stretch like a crocodile. Hip is in the center, and you are getting a stretch on the center of the hip. That is very important to relax that muscle because we take lot of load on uh, those muscles. So the more we take care of those muscles, the longer and the healthier our dance career will be. Uh, I'm just showing you the glimpses of what we uh, do. There are a lot, many, and uh, now stretch your leg to the front. It is important to stretch all the muscles well. Touch the nose on the knees. If you are a beginner, if you don't have the flexibility, doesn't matter. Go how much you can. And every day, if you do it, you will be able to do completely. Now, today, 
you should not be uh, dressed up like that and do the stretching. So it is better you wear some comfortable clothes and uh, then do your stretching so that you don't have any strain feeling anywhere. From here, put the hands beside the legs and lift the up. And now slowly. Hope you all enjoyed today's session and uh, we begin tomorrow at the same time, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and two hours. And tomorrow is the concluding session, so don't miss it if you are following. Spread this among your friends and family who are passionate about Odyssey and who are art lovers. They they can join us. Anybody can join us uh, a live session. And uh, it's a beautiful opportunity for me to share my art. And it's a beautiful opportunity for all of you who are watching this being home and being safe. So during this COVID, my suggestion, be home, be safe. And I thank once again all the team members of uh, Stigma K for taking up this initiative and uh, helping all of us uh, to be in good spirit and uh, mentally healthy. Thank you so much. See you all tomorrow. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, it's a great opportunity for all of us to host you and for all the viewers to learn from you. Today's session was really interesting. And the last piece that you... Uh, took up was uh, really beautiful. Thank, thank you so you, much. Thank and, you, Vidhi. Thank you yeah. so much, Vidhi. And looking forward for tomorrow as well. We have some beautiful things tomorrow lined up. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And also, I would like to thank Sanjana Ji yes. for coming Sanjana together. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Chandana and me, we extend our gratitude to all of you, all the members of. Thank you. Thank you, Vidhi. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow.